In this lecture, we are going to implement some logic in order to send different error messages for the development and production environment. For that, let's open this controllers folder and let's open this error controller.js. Now here, we are sending the same response to everyone no matter if we are in development or production environment. But what we want is, in production, we want to leak as little information about the errors to the client as possible. So in that case, we only want to send a nicer user-friendly simple error message so that the user knows what's wrong. Now, we want to leak as little information as possible to avoid any misuse of the error messages to secure our application from hackers or other bad intended users. But on the other hand, when we are in the development, we want to get as much information about the error that has occurred as possible. That's because in the development, the developers will be the end users. So by sending sufficient amount of information about the error to the developer, the developer will have enough information in order to fix the error if that error is a bug. Okay, so basically we want to send different error responses for different environments. For the development environment, we want to send as much information about the error to the client as possible. But in case of production environment, we want to send as less information as possible to the client. For that, let's go ahead and let's write some if else statement. So here we want to check if process.inv.node underscore inv if it is equal to development. In that case, we want to send this response. So I'll cut it from here and I will paste it inside this if statement. Okay, so there we want to send the status code of the error, the error message, and we also want to send the stack trace. So here I will create a new property called stack trace and there I can say error dot stack and let's also send the complete error object itself okay so we have that error object inside this error parameter so basically this error parameter so let's send this error object also in the response in case of development environment but if the environment is production so again let's write this if statement let me copy this line from here and let's paste it here and this time we want to check if the environment is production okay so if the environment is production as i mentioned earlier we want to send as less information as possible so here let me copy this response let's paste it here and there we don't want to send the error object in the response and we also don't want to send the stack trace in the response okay so now what will happen is if the user tries to access the application hosted on the production server and if some error occurs in the response he is only going to get the error status code and the error message but if the user is trying to access the application from the development server and there if some error occurs along with the error status and error message he is also going to get the stack trace so that will also get sent with the error response and then we are also sending the error object here so the user will also receive that error object which has occurred in the response all right now what i'm also going to do is I'm going to create a couple of functions. So let me go ahead and let me create a variable. I will call it dev errors. And here I'm going to create a function. And inside this function, I'm going to put this code. So I'll cut it from here and I'll paste it here. Okay. Now, in order to make this code work, we need the response object to be passed to this dev errors function. So we are expecting the response object here. As the parameter and then we also need the error object because you see here we are also using the error so we also want the error in the parameter when this function is called so let me go ahead and let me call this function here inside this if statement and there let's pass the response object so this object from here and also the error object so this object okay let's create another function Let's call this prod error. And this one also going to receive the response and the error object. And I'm going to copy this code from here. I'll cut it from here and I'll paste it inside this function. And then inside this else if statement, I'm going to call this function. Okay. And when we are calling this function again here, we need to pass the response object to the first parameter. And we need to pass this error object to the second parameter. So now this function looks a bit leaner. Finally, 
in our custom class so if i open this utils folder here we have our custom error.js file and in there we have our custom error class now if you remember in this custom error class we created a property called is operational and there we are setting it to true so now we are going to use this property basically in production we only want to send those error messages to the client which is an operational error so when we are going to create an error using this custom error class there this is operational will be set to true so there we are saying that it is an operational error so if i go to this movies controller there we are creating an error object using this custom error class so by default for this error the is operational will be true that means it will be an operational error same thing we are doing if i go to app.js and here inside this route also we are creating the error object using the custom error so there also the is operational property will be true because if i go to this class so this custom error.js class there you see this is operationally set to true okay so in production we only want to send those error messages to the client which is an operational error if we have a programming error or some other unknown error we do not want to send any error message about that to the client in the production so what we want to do here is for the production errors we want to send this response only if the error is operational error so for that here we are going to check if error dot is operational in that case only we want to send this response now from where this is operational is going to come on this error object well most of the errors which we are going to create in our app we are going to create it using the custom error class so in that case it will have this is operational property and that will be set to true so in that case we want to send this response but for other errors this is operational will not be set so in that case we will not have this is operational property on the error object in that case we want to send another response so on the response object here let's first go ahead and let's set the status and there let's set the status to 500 and then let's send some json data in the response and there we are going to set the status to error and we are going to set the message to maybe something went wrong please try again later all right so currently all those errors which we are creating using this custom error class for that this is operational will be true so if that error occurs in that case we are going to send this response to the client but for other errors for example currently there are some errors which is created by mongoose and there we are not setting the is operational property right so those errors will be treated as non-operational errors and we will get this generic response in that case where the status will be error and the message will be something went wrong please try again later so for example all the validation errors on the movie model it is coming from the mongoose and not from our custom error class right we are not creating these errors by ourselves so right now those type of errors are not set to as operational errors and because of that when such error occurs for example when some validation error occurs it is going to send this generic response to the client where the error message will be something went wrong please try again later but we need to mark these errors the validation errors or other errors which the mongoose is going to throw to an operational error so that we can send the appropriate error message back to the client for example if some validation error occurs if some required field is missing we can send the appropriate error message saying that some of the required fields are missing to the client so there we want to send this kind of response and not a generic response like this and we are going to learn how we can do that in our upcoming lectures this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day